In this video, you will learn how components in Angular can communicate with each other, what is inputs and outputs, and what is the tree of components in Angular. Hi, I am Alexander Kocherhin from Monster Lessons Academy, where I am teaching you how to become a developer or improve your skills as a developer in learning by doing way. And if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe, and I will link everything that I am mentioning in the description box below. And just to remind you, this video is the part of the free Angular for Beginners series. So let's jump right into it. In previous video, we created styling for our component users list. So now it looks nice. So now let's talk about components and communication between them. Basically for now, we are starting with app component TS and then we have our users list. This is our whole tree of components. Of course you can imagine the big project where you have like maybe 50 components on the page, so at least it's like a content, then you have a top bar, then for example feed, uh, then inside feed you have some articles, and each article has some image and title, and it may be that every part of our application is additional component. And this is called Angular tree, because this is a tree of our component, starting from app component and then down, down, child in child and so on. But at some point we are thinking, okay, we can't just create our data like we did here in users list, we want somehow to share this data between components, or at least pass them from child to parent or vice versa. And this is exactly what we want to do in this video. For example, just imagine that our users list is a shareable component. For now we have this users array here inside, and basically we can't configure it. So just imagine the application where you are rendering users, and it may be the users list, and then the recent users, or favorites users, and so on. Basically it would be nice if our users list component will be uh, reusable and configurable, which means we want to get users from outside. So we just specify, ok, we want to render these users, and nothing else. And then our users list won't know exactly what users we want to render, and this means that we can render this uh, users list in different places. So basically here, for example, from our app component, we need to give inside as a parameter users then. The other part of the problem is also regarding users list and that we are doing remove user and add user here. Why it is the problem? Just imagine that in some part of application we really want to do something like this, and in another part we want remove user to be triggered by API call, which means user click remove user, and we are saying ok, we want to remove this user, we are making API call to our API, and then we get some response, and only after this we remove user. This is the second problem, which means if we have remove user and add user functions here, then we can't say from the outside what exactly they are doing. And the third problem would be if we move users for example outside and we just pass them, but here we are trying to do some magic with them, for example filtering in style child. And then we have a problem that it's really difficult to debug the code, because we have users in one place, for example in parent, and then somewhere in child, 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 you want to modify these users, then it's almost impossible to really debug it fast. Now let's check how to avoid all these problems and what we can do with our code. So here we have users, and basically I want to take them completely out of our users list. Now let's open here our app component TS, and as you can see it is completely empty. And I will just pass out users here. So basically we have all logic in parent component app component, and we don't have any data in our users list. Now the question is how we can give these users from the parent inside users list. So basically, as you can imagine, now users list doesn't know anything regarding users, and only parent can decide what data to give inside. And to make it configurable, we can make an input. 
And as you can see here, the input is a special thing. It is also with add attribute here. This is important. And here you can say input and then you need round brackets and then the variable, for example, users. And let's just save it. So as you can see here, we de we're declaring that our users list component needs the input users and we can provide it from outside. And let's do it now. Let's jump in HTML in app component. And as you can see, here is our app users list. And we can provide now users inside like this. As you can see here, we have a users attribute and we can provide variable users. And just remember what we learned already in previous videos regarding a binding of the properties. This is exactly the case. If you see here square brackets, this means that this is binding of the property. So basically this users in app component is this variable here. But variable on the left is special attribute which gives possibility to pass the user's data inside our app users list. So basically here we're saying, okay, we have users in our parent and we want to pass them in the input users. Let's save this now and let's jump back in our users list. And as you can see here, we have input users and then here everywhere we're working with these users, which means this input users is exactly written inside this with the name what we have here. And let's just check, we don't have any errors here in console. And let's open the browser and reload the page. As you can see here, we have still our users, but we don't have them anymore in our users list component. They are inside parent in app component. And this is exactly the first problem which is solved. Now we can use our component and this is like stateless because we don't have users inside and we just configure it like this in every new place where we want to use this component and we can pass here different users. Now let's check what we can do with our users list regarding remove user and add user. Basically, we need to do exactly the same logic. We need to move these functions outside. First of all, let's check remove user. So I will cut it out and paste just like this inside app component. So here we have remove user function and it manipulates our these users. And we have these users in the same component, which is exactly like it should be, because then it's easy to debug. Now the question is what we are doing inside users list. Basically here in HTML we have our remove user, but this method doesn't exist. Basically what we can do, we can simply say to the parent, hey here, user clicked on remove button. And this is it. How to do this? We can open here, I will close this for now. We can add here after input, output. And output is exactly the same thing like an input, but to pass an event to the parent. Basically with input, you are passing some data from parent to child and output is doing it directly in different direction. So we want to pass some data to the parent. This is why we have here output and here is the name of output. So here also round brackets and here will be remove user. And this is new event emitter. And this event emitter, this is important, as you can see, first auto import was not correct. So it should be from Angular core. And now here are round brackets. So what it is doing? So here we are declaring output, which means this is the event which we want to propagate to our parent. Now this is the name of the event, remove user. And here it is equals new event emitter. What is event, event emitter is a special class. So here we generate an object which will have the property emit and we will use it to emit our variable. So let's write this now in our HTML. We can here change remove user. Basically remove user stays the same because the output is the same name. But what is important here, we can't simply call it like this. As you can see, I have the error that remove user is not callable because this is an object. And we can use here dot and then write emit. And as you can see, emit is a method and we can call it. So basically here, I don't need route brackets. And we can simply on click call emit of our remove user emitter. 
this is it. So once again, we have a component, we define here our output. This is our event, which we want to trigger for parent. And to trigger it, we need to write remove user, this is the name of our output, dot emit, and then we can pass some data inside, but of course it's not mandatory. And here we want to pass user.id because it's unique ID and we need to know in parent what data to remove. So from child everything is ready and now we can jump with our app component HTML and add here our event. So for this we have round brackets and then remove user. And then here we will call remove user with dollar $event. So let's talk about this code now. As you can see here around brackets, which means this is event. We already learned this in previous videos. And this is the custom output that we created, remove user. This is why on the left we have remove user. And this remove user on the right is the method from app component TS. So this is this method. And what is this dollar event? If we won't write anything here, then we won't get any argument inside remove user here. But actually we passed in our output the ID and we want to give it directly here as a parameter. So for this we need to write here dollar $event. Then our parameter from our child will be given inside the function in the parent. Let's now check if it's working. So we don't have any errors here. Let's open the browser, we click here remove and the item is removed. So now everything is working through the parent and we can check it. We can directly write here console log remove from parent and here will be our ID. And then if we will click remove, you can see remove user from parent three, which means now our uh, users list doesn't know anything about the process of removing. We simply say for our parent, okay, uh, user clicked the button remove and this is it and parent must decide on its own how to remove the item Now we just need to refactor our add user. This is not that difficult. We simply Copy everything. I won't remove it from here because we need some parts of this function so what we are doing here, we have add user and basically this will be also output. So here we will get a name and an age and basically age we can leave here because this is uh, static for now and we can pass here only name. So here is name string and basically we generate here user ID and here we will have just name and not this uh, unique name or new username. So this is the name which comes from the argument and we don't need to do something with this new username because this property doesn't exist in our parent. So the only thing that we are doing here is generating new user and pushing it to our this users list. So our add user here is ready and now we want to create one more input and name it add user. And here we have a problem and as you can see I get an error from TypeScript duplicate identifier add user because output goes in this and we already have in this add user function here. So we can't have the same name. This is why a, a lot of people are trying always to name outputs with the word for example event at the end. Then you will know that this output will always be unique and you can use add user function as normal. So what we can do here, here in our HTML, just to remind you, we have this value, change set new username to change the property. This is all fine. And in add user, we want now to emit the value. So we don't need all this code at all because it will happen in parent. But what won't happen in parent is this new username. This we need to leave here to clean our input. And now here we can emit our uh, output. So here we need this, add user event. And here we are calling emit. And inside we want to pass our name. And our name is this new username. And all this commented out code we can simply remove. As you can see, now our component doesn't know anything at all. So we simply dispatch some actions outside, so through outputs, and we get some data in our input. This is it.
So in HTML everything is already clean and we just need to update our app component HTML. So here we have remove user action, but we don't have add user event. So here will be add user and we want also to pass inside event. And we can console log it now here just to be on the safe side. It is add user parent and here will be our name. Let's check in the browser. We click at user and as you can see edit user parent and here is our name and then we successfully created this user. In this video you learned on the real example how parent and child components can communicate inside Angular just with the help of inputs and outputs. And if Angular for Beginners course is too easy for you, then don't hesitate and check my advanced Angular course, which is going 14 hours, where we're creating the real application from start to the end. And I will link the link in the description box below. And if you like this video and you want more content like this, don't forget to put thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you in my next video.